So Apostle, right now I'm sort of in what you would call a wilderness season. Can you... Sorry, I hear that so often. I'm like, what does that even mean anymore? It just felt like a lot of the wilderness season, things feel dry, things mm -hmm. feel directionless. It feels very much like I don't know what to do. But I know from the Bible that the Israelites had to pass almost a test by God. How do I pass that test? How do you pass the wilderness? Yes, wilderness can be a perpetual state perpetuated by the individual. Hmm. Can you imagine a 14 day journey was turned into 40 years? An 11 day journey, not even one year, one year is something, okay? Hmm. No, even one year is a lot. One year is 365 days. Imagine if it was 11 to 365. 11 to 365 times four, please calculate that for me. How long? 14,600. So they turned an 11-day journey into 14,600. Doesn't that scare you? Doesn't that make you think that part of our wilderness may not be the devil? It may not be witches in our family village. It might not be bats chasing us from the, from our, the family altar. That majority of it could be our own pattern. That what people are being defeated by is not the devil but themselves. And that the devil's greatest weapon against them is them. So perhaps we're perpetuating the wilderness experience. Why did the children of Israel perpetuate the wilderness experience? Or how did they do it? Very simple. They were conditioned by Egypt. And because of Egyptian conditioning, the wilderness was God breaking them down to rebuild them. They weren't willing to unlearn. In fact, the, the note was that we, they were stiff-necked. If you don't learn how to be malleable in God's hands, moldable and changeable, you're staying in the wilderness for a long time. And so Egypt is, is a system that conditions you to the point that even when you leave, it never leaves you. And you are institutionalized by your environment. It happened to um, the children of Israel. In, I mean, it happens to everyone when we're children. You can be institutionalized by your parents. Your parents could be Egypt. Your parents said, sit down, do this, be humble, son, do that, do that. To the point that when you leave your parents' house, you can still be infantilized, even though you're an adult. Oh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> okay, I just hit a nerve. <laughs> if you can see this face right now, he's like, why are you telling my story? <laughs> Let me calm down. You can be infantilized, you can be institutionalized by what you've been through. And so if you don't learn how to change, the wilderness is not about God changing your wilderness season. The wilderness is about God using the wilderness to change you. And until you change, the wilderness doesn't change. So he said, let, he, he sold a story to the children of Israel that he didn't tell Pharaoh. To Pharaoh, he said, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. To the children of Israel, he said, let my people go, uh, be released so you can have milk and honey. He sells candy to the children of Israel, the sweetness, but he sells the bitterness to the enemy. What is worship about? Worship is not for God's ego. Worship is so you can behold him and be transformed into him. When you become like God, your wilderness season ends. Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days, fasted for 40 days. He didn't stay there for 40 years. Or 40 days. He's in the wilderness. He's fasting. What is the whole process about? So that when he comes out, it says he came out in the power of the Holy Ghost. He came out like God. The entire purpose of the wilderness is God shutting down every other option you have. So your only option is him. And when you learn that your only option is him, then you pass the test. Everything in the wilderness was God pointing to himself. Put blood on the door, as Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. They come across bitter water called Marah. And then he puts a stick in the bitter water. And the water was made sweet. Marah later translated the name Mary. Stick is the cross. Jesus went into the womb of Mary and made our bitterness sweet. 
they go and see manna falling from heaven. That's Jesus. I'm the manna, the bread that fell from heaven. Manna means what is it? He came amongst his own and his own recognized him not. When you got the manna, it was like white seed. You ground it into powder. He was marred for us. Then you put it on a baking tray. When you take it off the baking tray, it turns into like what Jewish people call matzah bread. It has stripes, it has bruises, and it has holes. Everything in the wilderness was God preaching about Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquity. Trans uh, by his stripes we were healed. Uh, we consider him pierced, stricken by God. Everything in that wilderness was God, uh, God testifying about Jesus. And yet, the children of Israel didn't know it. That everything was to see him and be transformed to be like him. So when they came to the promised land, they said we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. It, the wilderness is all about reshaping how you imagine yourself to be. He breaks you and then remakes you into himself. They just broke down. But the, Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able. The people of this land are like meat for us. He says they had a different spirit. What Adam and Eve lost is the image of God. If I take my iPad now and give it to my brother, he can unlock it. The reason why life isn't unlocking to people is they don't have the image of God. Image creates access. When you have God's image, you have access to whatever God has. And so prayer and the wilderness and worship is not for God's ego. It's because the law of worship is you become what you worship. So then... I guess from a heart posture perspective, how do you come out of slavery and you're probably traumatized, you're probably shattered? How do you come out from that and now be in a heart posture where you can be malleable towards God instead of having a hard heart? Abide in his presence. Find home with God. Let him do the work. Be transformed in his presence and by the renewing of your mind. Abide and you'll produce fruit. So what we don't learn to do is we don't learn to remain long enough for him to change us. Sit in the sun long enough and it will change you. Stare at the face of God long enough and tell me if you don't change. He says, those who look to him shall be radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. Moses stayed in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. His face shone like an angel. We have to learn to behold him until we're changed. So then, I guess, as you're coming across maybe to the end of that season, how do you know the line between, how do you know when it's ended as opposed to you maybe trying to take yourself out of it and lift yourself, if that makes sense? You know that it's ended because you transform that atmosphere. Okay. In the wilderness, Aaron's rod blossomed you know when you blossom in a wilderness. When it doesn't require your season to change for fruit to show up in your life. Imagine a rod, it only blossoms when it's stuck to the ground, it's source. But it's no longer in the ground, yet it blossomed. That was the supernatural proof that God had called Aaron to ministry, that his rod blossomed in the wilderness. You know when you come out because now the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. The very, that's why Moses said, don't take us up from here to the promised land, because the promised land is like a wilderness without the presence. To Moses, his life was fruitful so long as he had the presence of God. He had everything he needed. So the promised land would have been a burdensome land if they didn't have the presence. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. You know when you, it's not when your season changes, it's when you change your season. It's like... Um, Go back. It's not when your season changes, it's when you change your season. So you become so ready now that you change your season. Uh, what God is, it's like, um, what was it? The, a mom tells a, a child to put three things in boiling water egg, potato, tea. After it boiled, she said, Daughter, what did you notice about the the egg, she said, mommy was soft, it became hard. Don't let life's childs make you hard. 
What did you notice about the potato? Mum was hard, it became soft. Don't let life's trials make you soft. What did you notice about the tea bag, Mum? It transformed the atmosphere around it from what was inside of it. When what's in you transforms the atmosphere around you. That's what the witness is about. It's about discovering what's inside you, the God nature in you. That's it. So I guess in terms of practical things, the way to fast track, for lack of a better word, and not extend your season is to just abide in Him until you're transformed to the point where not necessarily God takes you out, but you almost take yourself out. Okay. Your transformation transforms the environment. So many people want God to transform stuff, but God isn't trans. If God, if you go through something, God isn't changing. It's because He's using it to change you. Hey guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I know that was a little bit harsh of a message, a bit cold, but rumor has it that those who like this particular video, their wilderness experience will change in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Those of you who don't like, share, and subscribe, your wilderness will still change. I love you. See you at the top.